Good morning, GMS. I'm Sean. And I'm Emma. And welcome to the GMS News Show for the week of October 4th, 2021. If your child is home due to an illness, please make sure that you call 317-889-4040, extension 2, to let the school know what is going on. If you, if you're, if you are going to be gone for a trip, you need to let the office know in, a week in advance. Students, if your Chromebook needs a parent to replace, please have a parent fill out the form on the GMS website. Click on the parent tab and click on device repair. Students, remember you need to wear your mask. If you need to have your nose and mouth covered at all times, students riding a bus must also wear a mask while on the bus. Thanks so much for your cooperation. Student, if you are running a device, please do not remove the protective case. If damage occurs without the school issue protective case intact, the school insurance policy is null and void. A quick reminder about the dress code. Remember, all pants must be standard length garments. Therefore, short skirts, dresses, and more must be fingertip lengths or longer with, with or without garments underneath. Thanks for your understanding. Now let's go to the end of the, t of the week. Top trending in the GMS Sports Update. Have a great week, everybody, and remember to stay safe. Welcome to the GM GMS News Show, Interview of the Week. I'm Amaya Baker here with Physical ed Education Instructor, Mr. Rader. How are you doing today? Good morning, Amaya. I'm doing well. Thank you. Would you like to start off, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, like you said, for those of you who don't know, my name is Mr. Rader. Um, I'm one of the four PE teachers here at GMS, and I help teach with the sixth grade and seventh grade. Why did you decide to become a physical education in instructor? Uh, well, it was an easy decision for me. It was a long path to get here, um, but for going all the way back, even when I was your age in middle school, um, I enjoyed helping uh, my fellow teammates and, and learning and, and expanding upon what it is that we're working in, in class and in practice and things of that nature. Um, and so moving forward, I, I looked to the education field. And then as I got older into high school and even into college, um, just developing athletics and getting involved in um, extracurricular activities and, and, and you know, uh, the collegiate level and things along those lines, um, it was just the path that I wanted to choose and, and, and walk down. So that's where it got me here. So, What do you, do, what do you enjoy doing in your free time? Um, free time, that's, uh, free time. It's kind of a joke for me right now. Um, I am the proud father of three young little boys, um, so I don't really have free time. Um, but what time we do have, we enjoy uh, just getting out and trying to be active as much as we can. Um, take the boys to parks, you know, play games, soccer, baseball, whatever we can get them to, to be involved in. Um, and then just general family time, um, any time that I can get is what we're looking to do, especially in this time when we, we don't get to see much people anymore, um, but we make do with what we got, so. Do you have any pets? Uh, we do not have pets. Um, I consider the fact that I have three boys enough of a mess to handle with. Uh, we don't need to add any extra pets to, the, to that mix, so yeah, they, they keep us pretty busy, so. <laughs> Are you more of a night person or a morning person? Definitely a night person. Um, I'm sure I can relate with many of the students here. It's hard sometimes to get up in the morning, um, and you know, especially when I'm trying to get kids out of bed as well. Um, I just want to get, you know, I'm like, I'm right there with you, man. I want, I want to go bed back, my, back to bed myself. So, uh, but yeah, getting going in the evening for me at least, it's a lot easier to stay up and be active later in the day versus getting up bright and early. Yeah. For me, I'm neither. <laughs> you're neither? You just like that, you're like two hours in the middle of the day, you're like, I'm good there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming on our show today, Mr. Raider. Have a great week. Oh, thanks for having me. Welcome to GMS Sports. I'm Jackson. On Monday, October 4th, there's girls and boys soccer mid-state first round versus Decatur at 5.30 p.m. at home. 7th and 8th grade volleyball mid-state first round versus Perry Meridian at 5.30 at home. On Tuesday, October 5th, there's boys and girls soccer mid-state second round at 5.30 at home. 7th grade volleyball mid-state second round at 5.30 at home. 8th grade volleyball mid-state second round at 6.30 away. Thursday, October 7th, boys 7th and 8th grade football versus Franklin at 5.30 and 6.45 uh, at home. 7th grade girls soccer at 5.30 at Decatur. 7th and 8th grade volleyball at 5.30 and 6.30 at Perry Meridian. 
Boys Soccer vs. Decatur at 6.45 at Decatur. Hello, welcome to Top Trending where we share the top weird and trending stories of the week. I'm Izzy and let's get started with number three. According to Dogo News, Mattel's Barbie role model series designed to inspire young girls to pursue their dreams has highlighted the work of many incredible women. On August 4th, 2021, the U.S. toy maker revealed that the latest additions to their collection custom, one of a kind modeled after six female, Rome, or six female COVID-19 frontline workers. The honorees who come from different backgrounds and countries have different or have a few things in common. Number two, an unopened copy of Nintendo's Super Mario 64 sold at an auction in the U.S. on June 11th for the Australian equivalent for a whopping $1.6 million, shattering the previous record amount paid for a single video game, which was set just two days earlier. Heritage Auctions noted that it was the first time a single video game had, had ever sold for more than $1 million. Super Mario 64 was released in 1996 and quickly became a classic. Number one, imagine going to your friend's house for the first time and when you pull up to the driveway, the home is dragon shaped. According to DailyMail.com, the five bedroom building has hit the market and it is as expensive as $539,000. The creative house features a curled pipe at the far left of the structure, giving off the look of a dragon tail. The property was originally owned by a businessman with a trucking company. In 1978, the home was built, but in 1988, it was confirmed to be built, finished. The add-ons being a bridge and a full tower. That's all for Top Trending. Have a great week, GMS.